Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Sander Van Stee here today, and he is the founder and owner of Little of um, Moral Eats, and it's I'm so excited today because he also is part of our community. He has his own podcast in our community, and I think you should go check it out because he talks about a lot of important things when it comes to food and nutrition and health. And it's something great you should look into. Now, today he is going to talk about, and he's going to hit some topics about raw milk. And you're going to find this very interesting because it's uh, an amazing topic that I think a lot of people don't really understand. And when it comes to health, everything you put in your body has a huge impact on how we act, how we can prevent illness, how we can be healthy, and how we can inject longevity in our lives. Before we begin, though, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey, and they are going to have over 100 exhibitors there. They're going to have natural products there, and they'll have many exhibitors who are coaches in the healthcare field, doctors, and they'll have lots of different technologies also, and they'll be giving away a lot of products to a lot of people. So check it out. It'll be in the description box. And Sander Van Listy, I am so excited to have you on the show. So why don't you just tell everybody a little about yourself? Because if they didn't see your your other episodes, you know, can you just give them a little brush about who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm a, a Dutch immigrant, actually. I immigrated to Canada together with my parents when I was four years old. And we moved to Canada because my dad and my uncle farmed together in the Netherlands, they milk cows there. And then the the Hilden at the time, or which is now the Euro, and like the, the difference in land prices worked out in a way that they were able to sell their one farm in Canada and uh, in the Netherlands and move to Canada and split up and each have their own farm. So I grew up on a dairy farm and always been passionate about animals, loved animals since I was a little kid, always knew I wanted to do something with animals. So then when I uh, was getting to the end of high school, I actually, applied to vet school first because my old parents always told me that if there's any sort of doubt in my mind, I should always explore that first because farming can be pretty tough sometimes. Right. So I went to vet school and I did my undergrad in biology and got my application ready for vet school. And around that time, that's when I changed my mind and came home to the family dairy farm instead and never looked back from there. But always been kind of passionate and had lots of ideas of how I can improve things around the farm. But it was around 2000, like 2010 is when I graduated, came home to the dairy farm. 2015, we moved the animals over to a new facility, a new dairy barn. And and the cow's health improved dramatically, but my own health, ironically, at the same time, started to slip. So that kind of led me down a kind of a separate journey. It was a real inflection point in my life where I was questioning my health, my health choices, but also how we farmed. So that got me going looking at, I was especially interested in, in animal welfare, how I could improve the lives of farm animals because they've done so much to uh, improve my life. They bring so much joy to my life that I wanted to find a ways to to improve their lives as well. And and that line of thinking led me towards regenerative agriculture and a lot of things that we're doing around our farm right now, all trying to transition the farm to regenerative practices and, and, uh, and also a lot of other experiments that I've been running on the farm, like a uh, calf a foot dairies and stuff like that. It's um, trying to find ways that we can have the dairy cows raise their own calf, which I might t touch on that on another day. But today, yeah, I was hoping to speak about raw dairy. Yeah, I would love you to, because I, I think a lot of people don't know much about raw dairy. And, you know, you go into a grocery store, you buy your milk and, you know, they don't think about, you know, where it's coming from, you know, who's making it, how they're making it, what they're putting into it. So, Explain to people what raw dairy is and maybe the difference between raw dairy and buying regular milk, you know, from a commercial, you know, company that has a farm and, you know, the difference differences between the two. Yeah, like there's a lot of claims around raw dairy that you hear, like if you're lactose intolerant, you should drink raw milk. If you're allergic to, to dairy, you should drink raw milk, raw milk instead. Or if you have allergies in general, raw milk is amazing. Or if you have asthma or eczema, raw milks help with those too, apparently. Or like if you want to have an exercise recovery drink, the best thing you can drink is raw milk. Or even like you, some of those extreme endurance athletes, like those, um, like the Ironmans or like ultra marathons, if you're drinking the raw milk, helps recover from those extreme bouts of endurance as well. So 
there's a lot of claims. So I wanted, yeah, talk about those, but also like what milk is, and then uh, the effects of pasteurization, homogenization, and the science behind it. And the last thing I want to talk, talk about is like whether or not it's safe to drink raw milk. Cause yeah, that's a, that's, that's the button topic. So it's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so to be clear, like to, about my position, milk, whether it's raw or processed is a nutritional powerhouse. Like it's, it's got all sorts of proteins and healthy fats and, and minerals and vitamins. So it's, it's an amazing product. And like, to speak to that, like in Canada in 2022, there was a baby formula shortage. And the only other food that came close for a temporary basis to feed to your kids or to your babies would, would be whole milk. That's how amazing of a product it really is. So, uh, but then like, it's not, it's not the same as, as, as raw milk, raw milk and, and pasteurized homogenized milk is different. Because raw milk, it's it's a living food. It's the most alive food that you can get. Right. And when you consume it, it starts breaking itself down in your gut. It starts digesting itself, all while colonizing your gut with healthy bacteria. So it's a very unique product that way. So what's in raw milk? Like there's there's the healthy fats. You have your your cholesterol and your saturated fats, which, which there's a lot, of, there's a lot of um, controversial information on the internet about fats and what's healthy and what's not. But our brains are 20% cholesterol, and our our brains are 60% fat. Every cell membrane is is mostly saturated fat with cholesterol. Every membrane of every organelle inside every cell is is a lot of saturated fat, a lot of cholesterol. So it's it's not just an energy source. It's a building block for your body that your body needs. Right. And then there, there's the lactose in it. And like that's the carbohydrates, that's the sugars in the milk. But the unique thing about raw milk is that it also contains lactase, which is the enzyme that breaks down the lactose. Right. So that's why it helps so much for people that have uh, a lact have trouble digesting lactose because the milk will actually digest it itself and not just the enzymes in there, but there's actually bacteria in the raw milk that helps digest lactose and, and the fats as well. There's, there's enzymes that break down fats. There's uh, lipases in, in the raw milk that help digest the fats. And then proteins, the two major proteins in milk is casein and whey. And they're also accompanied with a protease enzyme an enzyme that breaks down proteins and the way is really unique because it's actually um, a signaling molecule it's uh they call those cytokines it's it's not just protein it's not just amino acids for your body it's a signaling molecule it stimulates your immune system and and signals to your body to and the cells in your body to to perform certain tasks and the, for example not whey itself but there's other cytokines in milk that can stimulate like it's been shown in cows to stimulate the growth and development of their gut and 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 um the maturation of their gut so as they grow their gut matures so that's partially why it's so beneficial for people who are running ultra marathons and extreme endurance bouts is because when you're under that much stress so, so much physical stress for such a prolonged period of time their gut start breaking down. There's gaps in the linings of their gut. So right. uh, milk presumably would help a lot with that as well because it's been shown in calves how it matures and, and heals their gut. So it would do the same, I would believe, in in people. Yeah. And then and then also uh, there's enzymes in milk, which is it's another type of protein. But enzymes, there's 60 different functional enzymes in raw milk that perform all sorts of different tasks. Like I was talking before about breaking down the nutrition in raw milk, but there's also an enzyme for every mineral in the milk that helps absorb those minerals completely. So those are all, they all perform functions in your gut and in your body that, and, and, and it's not just like the enzymes, then you also have um, like the vitamins and the minerals themselves. Like there's, there's every, every um, required 
fat and water soluble vitamin can be found in milk as well as every essential mineral can be found in milk. Right. And also every like 24 different trace minerals can be found in milk. And like, they're yeah. all come with enzymes that help you digest and absorb them completely. So like, yeah. So like, and, and then like, and one of those minerals is magnesium. So magnesium is, uh, is really important for sleeping. So like drinking milk is, is we quite often do it for our children. They, they do give them some milk before bed, like the magnesium in it helps your muscles relax and helps you go to sleep. And, right. and, and then towards sleep as well, there's also tryptophan in milk and that, that can be um, used by your body to make serotonin, which is really important to help your, your brain relax and, and go to sleep as well. Yeah. So it helps the sleep and, and then electrolytes, there's a lot of, there's a, a good balance of electrolytes in milk. So just for exercise in general, as a post recovery drink, it replenishes your electrolytes. It's got the protein and everything else in there, energy in there to replenish your glycogen stores and, and, and long-term energy for like with the fats and stuff like that. So there's, there's, there's that as well in raw milk. And as well, there's the bacteria, which I was speaking about earlier, there's a the healthy bacteria and, and then also there's immune immunoglobulins can be found in milk. Usually there's much more in colostrum than in, in regular milk, but there's still yeah. some amounts of immunoglobulins, actual immune cells in mm -hmm. the milk. So that like, that's, that's really touched on a lot of those claims that people have made early that I talked about at the, at the beginning, but like for the rest, there's, there's an awful lot of science behind behind raw milk as well. And uh, most recently, there's a study that I saw in 2018, where there was, I think, what was it, like over 3,000 adults that consumed raw dairy as children. And from that consumption, they had, as adults, they had more, uh, like better pulmonary function, better function of their lungs from the consumption of raw dairy when they were children. Right. And then... 2006, there was a massive study done on, on raw dairy in, in, in Europe, where those, I think, 15,000 participants of children that showed less less allergies and uh, less asthma for when they when when they drank raw milk, and they they controlled for the kids that were on farms because being on a farm has been shown, or, or exposure to animals, pets, and everything else has been shown to to improve like your allergies and stuff like that. But the raw milk separate from that, from kids that don't even live on farms had those same benefits. And then in 2001, there was a study with uh, almost a thousand kids mm -hmm. and they showed like there's, uh, they, they, they pin, pin pricks on their skin to see. And then they, they, they prick them with the common allergies and kids that drank raw milk had less of an allergic response. And then another study done in 2001, they had uh, those, like 2,618 kids, they were, but they were between the age of six and 13, but they had less asthma, less hay fever, less, um, yeah, less eczema as well. So like, yeah, there's, there's science backing up a lot of these claims as well. So, but that's unique to, to raw dairy. Like when we pasteurize it, a lot of that changes and yeah. pasteurization it started, we started pasteurizing our milk in the 1980s because there was um, there was a thousand babies that died in the 1980s oh, wow. from drinking something similar to raw milk. I don't want to call it raw milk. And I'll tell you why, what they, what they, what they were doing at that time, they were, they were trying to um, use some of the byproducts from breweries mm -hmm. and they would have a warehouse in the middle of the city next to a brewery and they would put cows in this warehouse and and feed them what they call swill, but basically it's the byproducts from the brewery process. It's yeah. their cows were fed basically nothing but the waste products from from the fermentation process of the brewery. Oh my and, goodness! And so like these cows, like they're meant to eat a high fibrous diet with lots of grasses, not um like a brewery slop. Yeah. <laughs> So like the, the, obviously the cows, they were, they were not healthy animals and they were, they were housed in, in a filthy conditions and the milk itself, it was, it didn't even, it was, it was like watery and like, and pale. It didn't look like milk. So they would actually add chalk to the milk so that people would actually look at it and, and recognize it as milk. Oh my goodness.
they were feeding this raw to their kids. And then, of course, not surprisingly, filthy conditions, unhealthy animals, unhealthy diet. The, the, the kids got sick and a lot of them died. So that, that's when pasteurization started to, to prevent all these all these sicknesses and, and, and deaths that are happening in young kids. So that's when, so 1980s on, that's when, yeah, pasteurization got more and more popular and, and uh, we've been doing it since then. But what pasteurization does is it changes your raw dairy and turns it into what the FDA considers one of the top nine most allergenic foods that you can eat. So it's a completely different product. And I myself, I've struggled with, with, um, with digesting dairy products as well. Like I, it was one of the, one of the foods that I had to start avoiding when I was starting down my health journey and trying to improve my own health. And, and, uh, but now when I drink, now that I'm drinking raw dairy, I'm one of the very few lucky people that can actually drink raw dairy in Canada legally because I produce it myself. You can't, it's illegal to sell it. It's illegal to transport it, but I can drink my own milk. So I can drink liters of this stuff without any issues. Whereas like I could, even as a small little chocolate bar with milk chocolate in it, it would cause all sorts of issues in the past. But um, yeah, so when you're, when you're pasteurizing, you're heating the milk up to like 160 degrees Fahrenheit or around 72 degrees Celsius. That's where you start killing off the, the harmful pathogens that might be in the milk. That's what they're, that's what they're after. And so they hit that temperature, but when you have all this energy and all this heat in the milk, you're you're changing the shape of the proteins, mm -hmm. and the shape of the proteins. That's what the like enzymes they 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 they, per, they perform their functions based off of the shape that they make. So when you're changing the shape, or they call it denaturing, you denature these proteins. It can no longer perform the functions anymore. And to that point, one of the ways they test whether your milk is properly pasteurized is if the enzyme alkaline phosphatase no longer is no longer working and that is that is an enzyme that actually helps you absorb calcium oh wow and calcium is one of the the nutrients in milk that people talk about the most like you gotta drink yeah. your milk get your calcium but yeah with pasteurized milk the enzyme that helps you absorb it is measured to make sure to to not be active anymore and that's how they know whether it's properly pasteurized or not oh wow yeah. So then, and then like the, let alone like the vitamins as well, like the vitamins, they're denatured as well. They're not as, as, as functional or as potent as they once were when the, when the, when the milk was raw and like the minerals, like I said, every single mineral has its own enzymes that helps it absorb and digest. So a, most of those minerals are affected as well and how well your body can utilize them. So like there's anywhere between 38 to 80% decrease, depending on which nutrient you're talking about, is a decrease in the way your body can use that vitamin or mineral. So that's pasteurization. Homogenization is done very much to improve the shelf life of milk because regular raw dairy, the milk, the fat separates and you just let it sit out and you'll get a layer of fat on top of it. Right. And uh, it doesn't look as pretty, but it's also... It affects the shelf life and how long it is stable for. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you, if I let uh, some raw dairy sit out in the kitchen counter, yeah, the next day I'll have sour cream on top. Two days later, I'll have cottage cheese. So it won't it won't be like a liquid milk that you can drink anymore. So right. it's so they they homogenize it by putting it under pressure and forcing it through a small like tiny tiny screen, and then the the fat globules. They break up the membranes around the fat globules break up and you end up with a bunch of small, much smaller fat globules that, that stay in solution a lot better. And like, but like, because you broke up the, the fats and, and the, the membranes of the fats, they have to, they create new membranes around these smaller fat globules, yeah. which are often done with like casein and the way like the proteins in the milk. Yes. And some people believe that process is partially a reason why you might have a stronger allergic response to homogenized milk than you would for unhomogenized milk, because you might be absorbing some of these small, tiny fat globules with the full size casings and stuff embedded, like the proteins embedded in there. So yeah. 
it's a, it's, it hasn't been proven yet, but that's what a lot of people think might be one of the issues with homogenization. And also like a lot of fat soluble vitamins, your vitamin A, D, E, and K, they're yeah. very sensitive vitamins. So just being smashed around like that damages these fat soluble vitamins as well. Yeah, so that was quite a lowdown. I'm not sure if I if I missed anything there, but um, yeah, like, the next thing that I would would like to touch on is uh, the the big the big question is is raw dairy safe? Yes. So there's like when when your people are worried about raw dairy, what they're really worried about is contamination, and mm -hmm. because inside the cow's butter, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the process of collecting it and then bottling it and putting it on your shelf or and, and like somewhere in between there again contaminated and they've they've found all sorts of very nasty pathogens in milk over the years like they found like e coli strep staph aureus um uh listeria like there's there's a campylobacter there's a long list of really nasty bacteria that they've found so like that's they say it's un it's unsafe it's not worth the risk is what we're told but like raw dairy is unique because there's actually some of the enzymes in raw dairy actually have antimicrobial effects. They okay. actually, so they actually um, help fight off pathogens in the milk. Um, so some of those would be um, uh, like lactoferrin, mm -hmm. is, is an enzyme, xanthine oxidase, uh, lact lactoperoxidase is, is is an enzyme that all have these these antimicrobial effects. Yeah. But also the niacin. Which is one of the B vitamins, the niacin in in milk. It actually affects how well um, these pathogenic bacteria can come into our body. Like having a niacin in the milk decreases how well these pathogens can enter our body. And then there is even there's bacteria in the the milk as well. Like the so the the healthy bacteria they help they outcompete um, the pathogenic bacteria because. Right. Like, if it, with the case of like pasteurized milk, where there is no, there's 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 no life, there's no there's no competition. If that if that gets affected or um, gets contaminated, the the pathogenic bacteria can just explode because there's no competition for the resources. Wow. But there's actually there's one there's one um, bacteria in particular, Lactobacillus, that. Mm -hmm. um, it decreases the pH of the milk over time. Right. And it, that pH actually makes it so that it's a less ideal environment for pathogenic bacteria to grow. So there's lots of natural defenses in raw milk that you wouldn't have after you pasteurize it. Wow. So like, but like, but like milk is not unique. Like any food can be contaminated. Yes. It's like you hear all the recalls all the time, especially with like, with like, anything like fruit, vegetables, it doesn't really matter. There's yeah. lots of recalls. It's not unique to dairy. So what we should do instead of just pasteurizing in order to keep our milk safe, like why don't we just test our milk and right. test every batch to test whether or not it's safe? Like it is such a, it, it's such a more logical conclusion to yeah. like, there might be something in here that, that could, could get us sick. But like, and like, there's also other things that we can do. Like if we know that the milk is being produced for the raw milk market, you can take extra steps to ensure the sanitation of that milk to prevent contamination. Yeah. And, and like people do that, like that's, that's actually happening. And if you look at the actual numbers of illnesses and breakouts and stuff like that over the years, since 2005, the, the, chances of getting sick of, of, and the, the number of illnesses has decreased mm -hmm. by percent. So like the, the, we're making progress. Like it's, yeah. it's, um, there, the, it's a, it's a good road to go down. And the last time anybody has died in relation to drinking raw milk was 2014. So as of today, that's 10 years without a single person dying. Yeah. And like, and like, I looked like I personally looked at the the data from 2014 of the number of people that get sick drinking raw milk, and it's only about 3.2 percent of the population in the in the U.S. 
wow. that drink raw milk. But if you look at like, and you take that into account as far as the number of people that are hospitalized or get sick from drinking raw dairy, you take yeah. a smaller portion of the population, uh, you can do some math on it. And, and I found that if you drink milk every single day for an entire year, your chances of getting sick yourself mm -hmm. is zero zero seven five percent wow after a whole year so that works out to being about like if you drink milk every single day you'll get sick about once every thirteen thousand years <laughs> wow so that's that's the data based off of like what's actually collected off people consuming raw dairy so it, it's nowhere near as high of a chance as you would be led to believe yeah and like and like and then like with like the and we're, they're constantly making improvements towards towards sanitation and and like those those ratios are decreasing over time. So like if you compare ten years, not a single person has died from raw milk. Right. If we compare that to alcohol. Every single year, there's 140 thousand people that die from consuming alcohol. Wow. What's the real danger? Like what what is causing the the real risk? to to consumers so like yes. or, or like the the drinking coca-cola or eating fast food or candy and stuff like that like these are foods that we know is unhealthy we yes. know causing chronic disease causing issues like there's it's, it's not there's like 100 percent chance that these yes. are not good for you whereas like like so like we take that and then we compare that to raw dairy why are we so strict about making it illegal to drink raw milk, when right? Other foods that are that are given the stamp of okay, and and they're, 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 it just the, you can't really make that, that comparison as far as the dangers of it. So like, yeah. So it doesn't make sense to me. Like I, we should be able to choose ourselves whether or not we think it's worth the risk. We can do our own research and make our own choice. Like we don't need the government to make that choice for us. I agree. You know, I, I think people don't really know enough about it. You know, I think people, there's too many myths out there. You know, you, people don't realize it, but when you, when you buy that, you know, milk, like if you ever read v vegan versus vegetarian, they talk about what happens on these farms to these cows. And if you read, you know, what, um, these pasteurized, these cat, these, these, some of these farms do, to these poor cows, you would never want to drink milk again. But people and people, you know, they would they would keep them in such a confined area where they were so pressed against each other that their hoofs would become deformed. And then when one one cow got sick, they inject everybody with antibiotics, and then they would inject them with with, um, with hormones to make these these cows um, produce more milk and get bigger. And um, so yeah, people, those hormones they, they inject it so that you don't even have to breed the cow anymore. Normally, a cow only starts producing milk after it's had a calf. Okay. That you can inject so that you don't have to keep getting them pregnant. Normally, it's about a, a one year cycle or a little bit more than a one year cycle where they produce milk and over time that milk production decreases and then you get them pregnant again. You have another calf oh. and then the milk production increases again. For So, like, that's a normal cycle. But like you can you can hijack that with, with certain hormones and you can make it so that milk production doesn't drop over time. It stays steady. So you I see. higher milk productions. But luckily in, the, in Canada, that's illegal. But <laughs> thank God. A lot of milk processors in, in the US don't allow it either. But yeah, it's just it's just another example of, of some of the things that happen. But yeah, and, and like as far as like um but that's why people should go to raw milk because when you see what happens, a lot of young girls at eight years old were developing because of the hormones injected in the milk. You know, I don't think people realize that you can drink raw milk. You know, I don't think there's enough, you know, just people just don't ha um, have the knowledge in front of them. They don't realize it. Yeah, that's a, it's a very unique product. Like I was talking about earlier, it's a very unique. And like, and then the, the thing too, like when you're consuming raw dairy, typically you're buying it directly from a farmer. So like there's that accountability. It's not a mass produced dairy product 
where the farmer has no idea who's drinking it and they don't have that same level of accountability when you're actually meeting the people you're shaking their hands mm -hmm. and then dropping off those milk products like you there's when you do it that way there's a a deeper level of pride and responsibility right. along with it but and also like the consumer they can ask the farmer questions so yeah. they can ask how that milk was produced how those animals are handled and how they're raised so you can make sure that these animals are being produced this food is being produced in a way that you agree with us like that's how you want these animals to be raised so you have so much more power when yeah. you're doing it that way and and that's the way it should be because like like you mentioned earlier the the food industry if you saw some of the food you know most of the food there's a good a large majority of food in America that is made in America but it, it is not allowed to be sold in other countries because it is so unhealthy you know the way they produce it and commercialize it um you know the dyes they use some of the things they inject into these foods you know, it's so unhealthy that other countries won't allow it to be sold in their countries. And, you know, it's very, the food industry in, in lots of areas is, is very corrupt, you know, but it, it, people have to understand there's other ways that you can get healthy food, like raw milk, you know, and I, you know, I don't think people realized until, you know, probably until they, they hear someone like you speak about raw milk, the benefits and how it's so healthier for you. But, you know, because in America, we have so many people with allergy problems now. We have so many people with all these dairy issues and they're all, they're all drinking those commercialized milks, you know, that have the hormones in them that have, you know, that have been pasteurized the wrong way and, and, you know, and, and they're getting very sick from it, but they continue to buy it. Yeah, but like, but it is decreasing over time. I think there's about a 1% decrease per year of fluid milk sales. And I think a lot of that is like what you're saying, but there's like the epidemic of auto, autoimmune conditions in the, in the developed world. And I think a lot of that, yeah, it's like a, it can be improved or, or, or you won't have, you won't react at least to like to dairy if you have that as raw, because like you have like the, the different kind of casings in milk and this, this A1 and A2, those are two different kind of casein proteins. And a lot of people react and have an immune response to the A1 casein or more, um, uh, more accurately is one of the breakdown products of the A1 casein. So it, it turns into um, BCM7, beta casomorphine seven and that's what causes us some sort of immune response in our body i see but when you it only breaks down to bcm7 after it's been pasteurized after I it's see. Labored. so if you're drinking raw milk it doesn't matter what kind of casein it is it doesn't break down to bcm7 it doesn't right. cause immune response and then like and then like lactose too a lot of people react to, to yes like, that's a like, big one like a lot of people have issues with lactose and, and, and um, like, because it's normal as, as mammals that we can produce lactase ourselves as, as infants. But then as we grow into adults, most mammals stop producing lactose. But I think, and like, there's some, there's some people with, with uh, certain heritages that, that prolong the period where they can digest and produce that lactase enzyme. Yeah. But, but it, for everybody, it decreases as you age, but like, you don't have to worry about that with raw dairy because the enzymes are already there to digest lactate, lactose as right. well as bacteria. And some of those cytokines, some of those signaling molecules actually stimulate your body to produce lactase. Wow. You know, I, and I'm glad that, that, you know, that people are taking a step up and not letting, they're putting some regulations where they're not letting people, you know, process milk the way they used to. That's really good to hear. Cause I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, but I was aware of how they used to do it. And it's nice to hear that they're actually putting their foot down and, and it's, and it's starting to decrease over time. And they're not allowed to do that. Yeah. There's um as far like the, the as far as like commercial dairy, there's like the, the overall um, housing and like the environment and like the management practices have improved dramatically over the years. Like every 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 decade is almost unrecognizable as far as how much better the it is for the actual animals. Like, um, it's, cow comfort is something that yeah. 
it was a massive trend when it comes to des designing dairy barns for the last 20 years or so or maybe even 30 now but like um if you like and a lot of that is like they need better ventilation they need they need more space per animal they need more stalls to lay down in they need right. deep bed instead of mattresses or even worse they used to just let them lay down on concrete like the pressure these are massive animals so the pressure points on their joints yeah is, is so like you need like deep bedding is ideal sand bedding the cows in sand so they, like they're basically laying down in a giant sandbox that's mm -hmm. massively increased in popularity too so because like these cows they just do so much better they there's no pressure points in their joints they don't their body doesn't break down so they last a lot longer and you want that because the older yeah. cows produce milk than the younger cows do like it's more oh, efficient sure. for the farmer as well so like dairy, the dairy industry has improved dramatically, but like unfortunately, those bad apples remain, and they spoil the they spoil the the, the dairy industry as a whole because that negative news spreads so much mm -hmm. faster than them yes. positive. Oh, for so sure. Like, like regulations have improved, like require things that you have to that you're required to do, as and and like whether that be for sanitation or, or milk collecting or, or cleaning or or just in general for animal housing has improved dramatically over the years to the point like now cows can still can can live on a well-managed farm uh, a long and happy life yeah oh that's amazing that's amazing now where can people find raw milk there's is yeah unfortunately in canada it can't be found okay uh, but um but there's actual apps now where I think it's called Raw Milk Finder, I believe. And you can look it up and actually tell you where you can find some raw milk producers, whether or, or if it's even available in your state. But yeah, um, unfortunately, like, there's 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 um there's a couple of farmers local to us that r tried for a long time to to do like cow sharing and stuff like that and, and push to legalize raw dairy. Yeah. Um, one fellow in in particular um, in, from Ontario who did had like a thirty year legal battle with with the government to try to oh legalize. wow and um, and I, I know there's been like huge legal battles. Some, there's a farmer in, in in BC as well that tried to do some cow sharing, and like pretty recently um, there was there was a farmer really close to us like a, a couple that um, that got busted for selling raw dairy on the black market because it, because it's illegal people still want it yeah so they, it's getting it's, it's it's pushed underground but like unfortunately like the, it's, it's i'm always surprised by how much the government is willing to invest in cracking down on raw dairy so right. like it's i don't know it doesn't make a lot of sense to me no and they allow all these other things that are so unhealthy for you and they they allow it, you know, even like the tobacco industry, they have no problem selling tobacco to people. And once you smoke a cigarette, there's a chemical in there that automatically makes your brain addictive to it and it kills you, you know. So let's let's use that as an example. They have no problem selling that, but then they have a problem selling raw milk, which just blows my mind, you know. Because it might be contaminated. And instead of instead of testing it to see if it is contaminated, you should pasteurize it or and make it illegal. So yeah, it doesn't really feel like it doesn't feel like it's truly in our best interest. No, it, it's and that's it's sad. Better, it's a better way. Yeah, it seems like it's a better way, a healthier way, you know. And and do you think over time you think it will change, or you think um, they'll still they're still gonna really put a, a a big fight about this, or do you think over time it, it might might actually change? It's something I've been giving a lot of thought to recently because um my own experience with raw dairy and feeding to my family and i absolutely love it doing digging into the research the benefits of it is incredible it's a very unique product so like i've been thinking a lot about like what would it take to legalize raw milk in canada and like that's why i've been i've been researching guys like michael schmidt from ontario who who fought that legal battle and ultimately lost and had to give up on it because and like and, and it, like the the overall sentiment from the government and from dairy farmers of Canada, it hasn't really changed in recent years. Like there's really, there's really no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no signs of them letting up on that. So I don't know, like maybe a better road to go down is through like just talking to the public and, and protesting it. Like, I don't, yeah. I, I wonder if that's a better road to go down than going, docking them directly and fighting legal battles. Like people have done that and it hasn't worked. So, Right. I wonder if that 
a more fruitful road to go down to make our voices heard that yeah. we be able to have that choice to to decide for ourselves whether or not it's worth the risk now if people want to get a healthier version of, of milk what do you suggest if, if, if right now raw milk it, it's very hard to get a hold of raw milk what would you suggest to people who want to drink milk what the next best best thing is until they can legalize this uh fermented dairy products are great like if you're somebody that has autoimmune conditions or something like that or or you're reacting to dairy fermented dairy like yogurt is an improvement the kefir is even better and they're, they're they're adding bacteria back into it after it's been pasteurized and that's that's a big improvement for sure um things like there's like 100 grass-fed milk which is has is um has better like fatty acid profiles got some, some more omega-3 fatty acids and especially if that is done with rotational grazing and managed in a way with, with of like regenerative agriculture, you can have that improved nutrient density. Yeah. Of, of, so like, if you can find that, 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 that'd be great too. Um, there's some improvements with organic milk as well. Like um, I've done a lot of digging and research on like the, the improvements of soil health over time. And they've actually compared farmers that raised or managed their farm in an organic way versus just doing no-till, but still using conventional cropping methods. Just yeah. not anymore and like tillage is one of the big things that affects soil health so i was flabbergasted to find out that over time the soil health actually improved quicker with organic management practices that actually use extra tillage mm. to manage the weeds and stuff like that yeah that conventionally cropped with no-till so like with that with that soil health too like that you get that improved nutrient density that you can have and then also you have there's there's very tight regulations on organic products so you can re, re, be more assured that, that you won't have all these harmful chemicals in there although even conventional milk is still an amazing product like i said that's what we're, what we're still producing on our farm we're just producing yeah. No dairy products and there's there's we can use antibiotics stuff like that but there's there's a milk withhold that um that is applied depending on which drug you're using and mm -hmm. i like the of, of being able to use the most effective drug available when i have a sick animal i want to get them healthy as, as quick as possible with right like with like when, when you're when you're juggling all these regulations stuff like that and you're trying to squeeze in between so you can still ship your according to that label that's put on your milk you're, you're restricted and you're not necessarily using the best drug available to help these animals. So I like to, do, that's why I'm still stuck sticking with like the conventional dairy at the moment on our mm -hmm. farm. But um, yeah, there's lots of options as far as like what you should consume if you're having different issues. Also like there's, there's, you can get milk that has uh, the lactase enzyme added to the milk. It's added back in. Um, and like if it's pasteurized too, and you're reacting to the proteins fermented, doesn't necessarily help you that much, but you can get, um, you can buy milk specifically from animals that are A2, A2, like okay. you can have cartridge breeds or, or you can have, um, uh, milk that's been tested that is completely mm -hmm. A2. So, you know, you have that, that, the kind of casein proteins in there that doesn't cause that same immune response that A1 casein does. Now, what type of services do you offer in like what what type of products and, and different types of services that you offer on your farm, on um, Moral Eats? Yeah, it's like we like, like I was saying before, we still have the conventional, the commercial dairy farm. So that's still sold on the commercial market. Um, I desperately want to be able to transition on that whole dairy farm over to regenerative agriculture as well but at the moment we we, we specialize very much towards like regenerative agriculture yes but especially the 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 welfare side of things trying to our mission is to improve the lives of farm animals so we we, we offer we have the pasture turkeys we have grass-fed grass-finished beef um, and then we also have pastured pork and we also source some sustainably sourced like wild seafood from okay. uh, fish that are that um that fish sustainably okay now do you have to go to your farm or do you have stores or do you do you sell to any larger um you know um grocery stores or or stores you know food stores at the moment almost all of our products are sold through our online store so we have okay. a online store and then for people that live in ontario we ship directly to their door 
Uh, we don't ship outside of Ontario yet. That's something that we hope to bring on in the future, especially yeah. once I can um, move the dairy, the dairy side of the farm over to these practices as well as we're as our, as our business grows, as more elites grows, and we yes. build that customer base, and we can have that assurance that we have a market for for the dairy. Then I wanted to switch the dairy over as well. And then that, that's going to be a very unique product. Like I'm moving towards the, I was talking before the calf foot dairy. That's going to be a very yeah. unique. You, you can't really find anywhere right. where you're trying to improve the welfare of these animals and give those cows that, that opportunity to raise their own calf and express their maternal behaviors. It's a, it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult balance to strike um, because it's not an improvement in welfare. If you have sick and unhealthy calves as exactly. a result. Exactly. So that's, that's what I'm working more towards. I'm, I'm carefully making, doing like experiments and, and, and improving the management and seeing what it takes to keep these calves healthy in a barn where their mothers are, are housed together. So like in that environment, how, how do I keep them healthy? And yeah, I'll talk about it more maybe in, in, in another podcast, but yeah, there's, there's some unique challenges to keep them together. Yeah. As it sounds like there is, you know, when you see other animals, even dogs, when they're with their the younger puppies, there is a, a special bond in a special way that they, they care also for the animals. It's it's really cool. So yeah, I would love to talk about that in a in a, in our next podcast. Now, if people if if you had to give a couple of takeaways from everything we talked about today, what would be a couple of things you'd like to emphasize that you really think are important for people to understand? One is like the the, the overall sentiment that raw dairy is a very unique product it's the most alive product food that you could possibly eat it's and because it's so alive it has very unique benefits for your digestion and for your health yeah. so like it's a product that if you can get your hands on count yourself lucky and i definitely recommend consuming it um but like but if you can't i feel like we need to we need to get together somehow and make our voices heard yes that, is something that that uh that we need to fight for is our right to 100%. choose for ourselves whether or not it's safe or safe enough or if it's worth it for us if we think it's worth the risk yes. so i'm not quite sure what that will look like yet but somehow we need to make our voices heard oh a hundred percent a hundred percent i'm all for that because I, like I was saying, I think I think a lot of the the medical issues that people are battling with today are caused by the foods they're eating, the processed foods, the foods that aren't natural, the foods that are are getting um, injected with unnatural ingredients that are harmful to the body. Because you know we can talk about this in our next session or a session later. But if you look at all the illnesses, you know diabetes tripled. So many things have have increased. And, you know, in order to prevent illness, in order to sustain health, we have to really look at the way we're eating. That's like one of the number one causes. I think, you know, ADHD is up. You know, there's so many different things. We were talking about allergies and stuff. We got to look at what we're eating and what's being put in these foods. And, you know, and I think, like you said, raw milk and natural foods, organic, you know, these are these are things to be focusing on and really learning who you're buying from. You know, I think that's a great emphasis, too, is like you talked about when you go and you buy from a farmer, you get to know that farmer personally. You get to know what their their morals are. You get to know who they are and, and what they stand for. And somehow we, we need to make that connection. People have to understand the importance of that because, you know, and maybe focus on going to farm markets for their, their food. And so, you know, I think that's great also. Now, can you tell everybody what your website is so they know where to go? Our website is um, moraleats.com. So M-O-R-A-L eats, E-A-T-S dot com. So that's, that's, uh, that's where... You can find us, and then uh, if you're in Ontario, we there's a spot there where you can sign up to our email list and have a chance to try some of our products for free. And uh, outside of that, with um, it's yeah, you can find us on social media as either Standard Van Steer or Moral Eats. That's the best way to find us. But yeah, the last thing I wanted to say before you before um, you let me go is that like you were talking about um, the, the 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 importance of eating healthy whole foods and stuff like that. But like I. Like, um, I, I tried to do, I tried to be pretty careful while I was talking about raw milk, but like, I have to be careful 
when I start making these, these, um, like Tara was talking about the health benefits of, of raw dairy, because like the FDA makes it illegal to claim that any sort of food or anything that can heal, treat, or, right. or, 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 or fix any sort of illness or disease. So like, it's illegal to, to make those claims, but I feel like that's part of our health issues here in the developed world is the fact that we have that as a sentiment that as something that's illegal because like a lot of the chronic diseases that we're struggling with that that modern medicine is struggling to to battle it it, it is it has to do with our diet and what we're eating so like yes Hi like hippocrates said it best back in like 400 bc like let food be thy medicine yes and, but now it's gotten to such a point that making a statement like that is illegal right so that's pretty indicative of the issues that we're having. Oh, I, I agree with you 100%, 100%. And we had even, we had a, um, we had a, a doctor come on from Harvard and he spoke about diabetes and, and he spoke about if, if we just took out certain processed grains and we took out certain foods out of our diet and just focused on the more natural foods, you could see that a lot, a lot of these things could cure diabetes and other illnesses if we just ate more purely and more clean. And, you know, he went on and talked about it for a while, but it, it all goes down to eating clean, to eating, you know, we weren't meant to have processed foods. Our body doesn't know what processed foods are. So when they go in your body, they're like, our body doesn't know what to do with them. It doesn't know, it has a hard time breaking them down. So it stores it in our body. And when it stores it in our body, it's leaching onto our organs. It's slowing us down. It's causing problems. We're going to the doctors. The doctors are giving uh, prescriptions to help with the symptoms. Then we're getting more problems from all these drugs. And, and it's an endless cycle. And people have to realize that, you know, just by changing the way we eat and eating more purely, and incorporating a few things into our lives, you know, our lives could turn around, but it's, it, it, it boils down to what we're putting in our bodies is, is, is you know, really high on the podium. Yeah. And a beautiful ha thing happens when you start consuming whole foods and like foods that your body was meant to eat. And that is like, you can actually start listening to your body. Your body actually makes sense to you. Yes. So like, because like your body is so confused when it's eating these highly processed foods that are super digestible, tastes amazing. It's got all sorts of sugars and 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 oils and stuff in that in there that that like the combination and, and the, the 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 way the texture of it and stuff like that. It's all manufactured to taste absolutely amazing. Yes. So like body doesn't know how much of it to eat, and then you eat these delicious foods, but your body is still devoid of nutrition. So yeah. you, your body has all these cravings for for more nutrition, but you're, all you're doing is feeding empty calories. So you get, you're, you're gaining weight and you're still unhealthy. You're still devoid of nutrition. So yeah. you're, you're so confused and you can't listen to your body. You don't trust your body. You start starving yourself. You're hungry. You don't want to eat because you're self-conscious about your weight or, <laughs> or you want to be healthy. You know what I mean? Like you just don't trust your body, but like an amazing thing happens when you eat real food, eat whole foods and um, eat the foods that we were designed to eat, our natural human diet. Yes. And that is, the body makes sense. Like you crave something that you eat and all you, if all you ever eat are whole foods, you start cra craving certain whole foods. Yes. And like, in the, and like, and you eat the foods that taste most delicious yes. because those are the foods, if it's a, if it's real food, delicious foods is usually what's best for you. Yes. It's a, if it's your if you're eating foods that you're meant to eat, the delicious foods are the best ones for you. So like, and then and then you just you eat till you're full. You you listen to the cravings and what those means. Like, and then and then you naturally reach a healthy diet and you become you reach a healthy weight. And, yes, and you become healthy. So like, it, it's it doesn't have to be that difficult as long as we don't eat these Franken foods that confuse yeah. our body. Exactly. A hundred percent. And you'll notice when you eat healthy and clean foods, you get full faster and you don't feel like you have to fall asleep after you eat a meal. Cause when you feel like you're going to fall asleep, that's because your body's working so hard to break it down. And so people have to realize those little signs, those are little signs from your body also, but we could talk about this forever. I feel like, but this has been a great, great, great interview. And I thank you so much, Sandra, for coming on the show today. 
and sharing your knowledge about raw milk, because I think it's really important because I don't think people realize, you know, how good raw milk could be. And maybe this will open their eyes and think about what they're putting in their body and what alternatives, you know, and changes they can make in their daily diet. And really think about when they're going into the grocery stores, when they're about to pick up milk, what kind of milk do you want? And if you have, you know, ways of getting, you know, pure milk, you know, to look into those things too, you know, cause you want, you want to be as, as organic as you can and healthiest as you can. Cause like we said, whatever we put in our body, we become. And if you want to live a long, happy and productive life, you really have to think about the food you're putting in your body. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. It's uh, something that I'm very passionate about. It's something that's like I was alluding to earlier. It's been kind of um, been been uh sitting heavy on my chest like all all the the fact that it, there's this product like i produce it myself but i can't i can't give it to people and people want it desperately yeah. and i and i've been researching the actual risks and the benefits and it's like like the the risk to reward it just doesn't doesn't make sense how strict we are, we're being so this feels good to get it off my chest hopefully people resonate with the message and uh and a lot of it makes sense because like yeah it, it's it's a very unique product raw dairy mm -hmm. And, like, and many people yeah. do other things to advocate for you too. That's right. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure what the best way yet to make your voice heard, but going down the straight road of just getting a lawyer and talking to the government hasn't worked in the past. So like, yeah. the, and I have no reason to believe that it would work in the future. So like, there, there, there might, hopefully there'll be another way that we can make our voices heard. Um, and uh, what that looks like, I'm not sure, but um I'm all for it. Whatever we can, whatever we can move and we can create. I know in America, they do a lot of petitions and they get a lot of people to sign these petitions and that starts shaking things up. And I, you know, and that's maybe, maybe that could be a possible way of, of maybe making them look at these things and maybe put it into consideration as well. Yeah. There is actually a petition that I've signed in Canada called like the Canadian Artisan Dairy. And uh, it's a website, and then they, on there you can sign up a petition, and uh, they have they have like example letters too that you can send to whatever people's of office. So like that's uh, that that'd be good for people to check out as well in Canada at least. And uh, like I've signed it, and um, yeah, hopefully the, the people can look at that as well to see <laughs> how how much support there is for raw dairy. Yeah, because we we need raw dairy in, in America. Because if you saw how how unhealthy so much so much of the food that they sell in, in the uh, food industry and the grocery stores, you would be it would be sick to your stomach. You know, so it's uh, it's definitely we need to we need to be stricter. Like a lot of the countries in Europe, like I said, they're not even allowing a lot of the foods from America in, into into their countries. So that tells you something right there. So we need to start really making change and really voicing, you know, I, I think if we voice enough, eventually change will be, will occur. You know, we just have to really figure out a way that that will be most effective. But yeah, you know, I think, you know, raw dairy, I think healthier foods, clean eating, all that needs to be emphasized more strongly. It's not about making money and, and throwing all these sugary foods and salty foods, because right now those type of foods with all those unhealthy ingredients are just killing people and causing illness. So change needs that definitely needs to be made. Every single time that there's another step of processing, there's another hand in the pot that's making money. So like there's, unfortunately, there's so much financial um, emphasis, so much, so much to be gained through processing because like it's value add, even though it's making us food less healthy and less pure, like that value add, like that every single person that, that has a hand in there to process it one step further is making money. And like, yeah. like there's so much financial gain. There's so much financial, financial incentive to continue eating this way, let alone the fact that it tastes amazing and it stays on the shelf for it's convenient. So yes. there's, there's, it's an uphill battle for sure, but it's definitely one battle that's worth it, is worth fighting for. And uh, and you, once you you fight that battle and you win, that you feel amazing and you, you yes. won't go back. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh, you know, this has been great, Sander. I can talk to you forever, you know, <laughs> but you'll be on soon. Like I said, Sander has his own um, podcast with us and he has a lot of great info and he's going to be talking about a lot of other topics, you know, related to food and health. And so keep your eye on for Sander and we look forward to seeing you soon on the back on the show. 
And we're so happy to have you in our podcast community. Pleasure. I look forward to it as well. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.